years ago, one night, I found myself on the kitchen floor with a knife in my hand against my wrist, waiting to slice through and kill myself. I had lost my partner, he just passed away, and all I saw around me was darkness. I missed him very much, and I wanted to talk about him to anybody, to somebody, but I didn't know what to say. People don't talk about death because it is like a full stop to all the happy things they know in life. And in my case, it was worse. My love was same-sex love, and people don't talk about it. I was sad, lonely, depressed, and time and time, time again, I would find myself night after night sitting in the kitchen floor with a knife in my hand, thinking I should just do it. Because I thought that was probably the only way I could stop the depression. Because I thought that was probably the only way out. But something would stop me. I was angry. I was a good guy. When good things are supposed to happen to good people, then why me? It was so unfair. And yet, I made it back. I'm here now. And I'm going to tell you how I managed to do that using three steps. One, by finding a hidden power inside me. Two, by using that power to validate myself, my grief, to validate what I was going through. And three, by setting goals for myself. So what is this hidden power that I'm talking about? What is this hocus pocus? Am I a superhero? No. We've all heard about it. And yet we haven't realized its true potential. When I was going through those cycles of depression, it was like a downward spiral sucking me in. The more I fought it, the more it sucked me in deeper. I was a strong guy. And yet, I didn't know why I was slipping into depression, why it was so overwhelming. Why couldn't I fight it? And so I tried to fight it. But the more I fought it, the more it sucked me in. Until I reached a point where the only direction I could go was probably just upwards. And people used to say, think positive, stay positive. Oh yeah, right. When you're going through that shit and you think it's very easy to stay positive, to think positive, no, it is not. We have all gone through that. We have all tried that. It's not possible. And yet, maybe there was this one small chance that I could turn around. Maybe there was something in what they were saying. I had to just look at myself and try to open my mind and understand what was going on. I realized when I was upset, I was thinking about something negative. And my thoughts would become negative. And the more my thoughts became negative, the more upset I was. So I realized one thing. I was never tired of thinking something negative. Thought after thought would occur to me. I would be creating them or they would come to me and I was never tired. My mind was never at rest. And so I thought, wait a second. Now what will happen if I just open my mind and flick a switch and just think about happy thoughts? In the same way, I would be able to create one happy thought after another, one great idea after another, and create a way for myself to come out of my depression. That was the hidden power. That is something we have in each one of us. But we don't 
realize its potential until we are like pushed to the brink. So the next step was to understand what was going on. I was sad, I was angry, I was lonely, I was going through these cycles of depression, I didn't know what I was going to do next. And I felt like killing myself and I had become somebody I didn't recognize anymore. I was a different person, that was not me. And I didn't like myself anymore because it was simply not me. And so I thought, and thought again, and all those happy thoughts and ideas. And I took one idea. I split myself, or I imagined myself as two different people. One, that was lonely, sad, broken, like me, the part I had identified myself with at that time. And the other one, very happy, energetic, full of enthusiasm, and the one I wanted to be. And the most important part was that happy me loved the sad me. And whenever I was sad and lonely, I was sitting alone by myself, and I would just imagine this happy me coming and putting his arms around me and giving me a hug and telling me, everything's going to be all right. You don't need to worry. Don't cry. It's OK. It's just a show of strength. You're just releasing your sadness. And don't worry, I'm always with you. I love you. And most importantly, I'm a part of you. In the beginning, I thought it was a very silly idea, and so I used to laugh it off. And I was like, OK, yeah, right, I'm going cuckoo. <laughs> but over time, I realized how important it was. It was that part of me that hadn't given up hope. It was that part of me that hadn't accepted defeat. It was that part of me that wanted to live. It was that part of me that loved myself. It was that part of me that chose to forgive me for something that was beyond my control. It was that part of me that showed me compassion when I needed it the most. And it was a part of me. That was very important to me because it helped me validate where I stood, myself, my grief, that everything was okay. But I was still not back. So I went around setting small goals for myself. I decided I would write a book. Small goal, yeah. <laughs> I decided I would write about my grief and share it with others that are going through the same pain, feeling lonely, don't know what to do, trying to kill themselves. And maybe, maybe there's just one person who would benefit from my book. And I would be so happy. But time and again, there would be so many things that would come my way, and I would feel like, oh, God, I'm never going to finish that book. But then I would think happy thoughts again. And I would bring back those feelings, those memories, those emotions from the times I was really happy and content. And once the feeling of confidence, of comfort, security would be established, I would go on writing. And when I finished the book and I published it, I had this amazing feeling of having accomplished a task, even when I was really struggling. It was something wonderful. So I went around, went about setting small goals for myself. I would have a movie night. I would go, I would date myself for a coffee. <laughs> yeah, you know, I would never stand myself up anyway. <laughs> and so can you. Not everyone needs to write a book. Not everyone needs to do something creative. You can do something to help others. You can do a little bit of charity, probably. You can go to an old age home and give a lady a hug. You can help children learn their course at school. You know, whenever you have free time, go around and help. Because it makes you feel good about yourself. That's the most important thing. In those days, I wanted to feel good about myself. And these goals, these small goals, really helped me come back. And I made it back by discovering that power, that hidden power, by validating myself, my, my grief, and setting those small goals. 
My confidence is back. I'm smiling again. I'm much stronger now. I was down, but I was never out. I would never be out because nothing can kill my spirit, my freedom to choose. I chose to live, and I chose to love myself, and so can you. The power to meet obstacles, to overcome them, is within each one of us. It teaches us love, forgiveness, compassion. It gives us hope, and it gives us purpose. It gives us a meaning to live for, to live for our dreams, the dreams that we haven't yet completed or haven't even started yet. So there's no point in giving up, and then we would never know how many people loved us. We would never know what we could have achieved if we gave up, so there's no giving up. So if you know someone who's going through this kind of pain, heart-crushing pain of loneliness, reach out to them. Give them a hug. Take them out for a coffee. You don't need to say anything to them. Just be there. If you don't know what to say, don't say anything. Your mere presence is going to convey your compassion, and it is going to make you feel good. That's the most important thing. You feel good about yourself. And if you are someone who's going through a lot of pain, and you don't think you can turn it around, that's totally OK. Reach out for help. Talk to someone who listen to you. Try. It just means you love yourself, and that is a great thing. If for some reason you don't see light at the end of the tunnel, don't stop digging. Don't stop digging. Thank you. <laughs>